Um, I'm golden. Uh, because I'm Pony Boy. Yeah. I get it. There's a book about this. Yeah. It uh, what? It doesn't end well. It doesn't, but that's fine. It's a book. <laughs> this is going to be different. Okay. On the internet, you are now seeing this slide. Uh, so, okay, we talked about what nootropics are. There are two terms that I need to uh, make sure everyone understands what I'm talking about when I say them. Uh, because I'm going to say the word drug a whole lot in this talk. And when I talk about drugs, I'm not talking about like drugs. I'm talking about a substance that you put in your body that does stuff to your body. Um, and a stack. You're going to hear stack a few times in here. A stack is basically a combination of drugs that you take to increase or decrease the effects of the individual drugs. So, neurotransmitters. Uh, this is a Venn diagram, just so you know. Uh, these, uh, the big bold words are the different kinds of neurotransmitter, neurotransmitters in your brain, and there are more than those, uh, but these are the important ones. Uh, can, you, can you guys actually see the little words on here? Because it, it was a very blurry image when I got it. That's fine, I will explain to you what they are. So, uh, you have basically three groups of neurotransmitters in your brain that we're going to focus on. Um, your dopamine and histamine uh, are things that make you pay attention to stuff. Um, your norepinephrine and acetylcholine are things that make you remember stuff. And then serotonin and glutamate are things that make you feel good about stuff. Um, most nootropics deal with norepinephrine and uh, acetylcholine. Uh, norepinephrine is also very, uh, very common to be to manipulate that. Uh, that's what most. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, like depression drugs. Um, there's a word. Right. Serotonin specific. Sure, it's fine. I'm, it's fine. Serotonin. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm trying. To, there's a specific word that I can't remember. Anti the name. Antidepressants. It's like depression drugs, but against <laughs> them. Yes. <laughs> I like, how, I like how everyone here knows SSRI. Yeah, they're just like ERI stuff, more. stuff, stuff, and I'm like, no, those are correct, but not at all what I'm thinking of. Antidepressants. So those deal a lot, antidepressants deal a lot with norepinephrine uh, and also with serotonin because, like I said, serotonin makes you feel good. Uh, so a lot of times you will take a drug that says, hey, I know you don't feel good, but we're going to get you really, really high on this so you feel really good. Um, but acetylcholine and norepinephrine are the ones that most people like when they take nootropic drugs. So, um, let's talk about everyday nootropics. Stuff that you probably use and you didn't know that you were using really good drugs. Um, first of all, our best friend caffeine. Uh, I, do, I need some, actually. Thank you. This is for me. I brought it. This is caffeine. Um, it is good. It's what's called a. Back. I don't need it now. There's, this is a slanted surface. I could, I could put it right there. But clumsy. Uh, so norep or norepinephrine. I'm talking about caffeine now. Uh, caffeine is a xanthine. Uh, that's a that's a word. You don't need to know what a xanthine is. Uh, but it's a type of chemical. Um, other xanthines that work, that function similarly to caffeine are uh, theobromine, which is found in chocolate. Uh, so if you ever wonder why you feel good when you eat chocolate, it's not the sugar in it, it's this awesome chemical that is basically caffeine. There's also caffeine in chocolate to a small extent. There's also sugar. What? There's also sugar. Yes. <laughs> um, caffeine does the things that you already know caffeine does. It makes you alert and it gives you energy and makes you focus on things. Uh, and a little pro tip, if you do not know this and don't already do it, if you're going to consume quantities of caffeine, take L-theanine with it. Uh, L-theanine is another substance that's found in green tea. Uh, and when you take L-theanine and caffeine together, it makes the caffeine way better, and it keeps you from getting jittery. It's awesome. Um, and it worked really, really well. I thought it didn't, and then I tried it, and I said, I'm wrong. Uh, so that is that. Nicotine, do we have people who smoke here and or vape? You guys were right the whole time. Uh, nicotine is mostly bad for you in most ways you consume it, uh, but if you like to do that, it's also okay. Uh, and nicotine, uh, it, this one was kind of surprised me when I found out about it, uh, that it actually like does good stuff for you to a degree. Uh, nicotine will improve your fine motor functions for a, pre for a period of time. 
Uh, so if you're working on something very detailed and you're having trouble with it, smoke a little bit and then go back. Uh, it also helps with episodic memory, which is like remembering one small thing for a little while uh, and alertness. Uh, nicotine doesn't last very long, as you might know if you use nicotine, uh, but for, for brief periods of time, it will help you a little bit. Uh, and then another one is this big word uh, that I can never pronounce right, so I'm going to call it PS. Uh, but I'm going to try. It's phosphatidylserine. I'm going to call it PS. Uh, uh, it is kind of controversial. Uh, not controversial, but it's very like experimental. There's not a lot of research on it yet. Um, but it's being tested uh, on dementia patients uh, to see if it can help dementia patients and people with Alzheimer's to improve their memory. Um, it comes in a lot of different sources of food. It's actually the, the best source for PS comes from cow brains. Uh, and that was what it used to be made of for a long time. They stopped uh, making it out of cow brains because there's this thing called mad cow disease now. Uh, and people don't like that for some reason. Um, and so you can get it from a lot of places. You can get it from soy. It's not good from soy. Your body can't use it. Uh, if you find some and you want to take it and it's from soy, don't because you literally, it will just go in your mouth and then come out your butt. Uh, this is science. Uh, but there was a study that found that if you combine it with omega-3 fatty acids, uh, that it increases the effect that it has. Granted, again, the effect hasn't really been like proven yet. There's just like two or three studies. Uh, but, so with that said, you can eat uh, this thing called fish, uh, because fish has omega-3s in it, and most fish are really high on the list of things with a lot of PS and then mackerel I found on the internet uh, is like the number one source, the number one fish source of both omega-3s and PS. Uh, so it tastes terrible too, uh, but it's, that's, that's why it's medicine. Uh, now, prescription drugs. Hey, if you don't have a prescription for prescription drugs, don't tell me that you're taking them. Um, we're going to talk about them right now. From a legal standpoint, I should tell you, don't actually take prescription drugs if you don't have a prescription for them. Um, thank you. Modafinil. Modafinil is cool. Most people uh, who are into nootropics are getting into it. That guy back there, he raised his hands. Are you on Modafinil right now, sir? Cool. I just tried it this morning. It's really good. Do uh, you have a prescription? I have totally a prescription. <laughs> I get it from India. Um, I didn't, I didn't really. I did. Uh, hey, you guys made it. I told you not to let these people in. That guy let me down. Um, okay, so modafinil. It is better known under the, the, the name of Provigil. Uh, it is used uh, to treat people with narcolepsy. Uh, basically, modafinil, if you feel like you are sleepy, this will make you really not sleepy anymore. Um, and so you can take it and then you can stay up. And it's like how you used to drink a lot of Mountain Dew at your land parties, except for this is a pill. Uh, and it tastes better than Mountain Dew, surprisingly yeah. enough. What? Is it is very possible. It tastes way better than Diet Mountain Dew, even. Because Diet Mountain Dew is the worst drink ever made. Uh, but yes, so you use it for narcolepsy if you feel sleepy. People who don't have prescriptions for it also use it for when they don't want to be sleepy. Uh, and it's a... Uh, it's a prescription drug, so if you don't have a prescription for it, it's kind of illegal to have. Uh, but there is a legal, and I use quotes, I'll explain later, there is a legal alternative called Adrafinil, uh, which is a French version of Modafinil that they made for a while. Uh, it doesn't work as well, um, and it kind of makes you feel a little sick sometimes, uh, but it's legal to own here. You can't actually make it or buy it in the United States, but you can carry it around in your pocket and you can import it from other countries and it's fine. If you can find it. They stopped making, uh, Olmafon is the, is like the brand name of it. They stopped making it like 20 years ago, uh, but people still make it places and you can get it. Um, Ritalin. Anybody here ever used Ritalin? Yes. This is a crowd that I think probably use Ritalin sometimes. Ritalin is used for ADHD, right? And it works by making your brain, uh, it prevents the reuptake, which is basically, uh, reuptake is essentially when your body says, hey, 
I've put out too much of this neurotransmitter, I'm going to take some of it back, right? Uh, and so that, that neurotransmitter doesn't get to the nerves that it's trying to get to and, and do what it wants to do. So Ritalin basically tells your brain like, hey, if there's extra dopamine, it's fine, just let it do its thing. Uh, and so dopamine gets to your, gets your cells and it makes you focus on things, right? Uh, which is why Ritalin is great for when you don't focus on things. Uh, and then we have Adderall. Adderall is kind of like Ritalin. Uh, Adderall is made of four different, what are called amphetamine salts. Um, so they're not like actual amphetamines, but they're actual amphetamines. Uh, and it's used to treat ADHD, as we said. And it works by basically telling your brain, hey, all of those neurotransmitters, just do them. Just make as much of them as you can. Um, and so a little trick that I learned at one point in time is that uh, you just get both Adderall and Ritalin and take them together. And then it tells your brain, make all of these neurotransmitters. And then it also tells your brain, hey, that extra dopamine is fine. Just like, that's fine. Don't do anything about that. Uh, don't do those, though, for, for legal purposes. Uh, and because I'm not a doctor, this is not a prescription. You have a question in the back? Uh, a point. Uh, so modafinil also is, is not a, uh, uh, in, in the same class of, of drugs as Adderall. Like no, drugs. it is not. So, so it doesn't, unless they're specifically testing for um, modafinil. Does not show up. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of a very uncommon drug for people to care about, right. uh, mostly because it's also expensive. It's, yeah, it's very expensive and hard to get. But yeah, most people don't really care. It's kind of like like most places you go to, like if you're applying for a job, uh, they might like if you take Adderall, it will probably show up on a drug test because it, it turns out it's yeah it's amphetamines. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, modafinil is something that doesn't really get screened for unless they're specifically screening for, to find out if you use modafinil, and I don't know why they would. Uh, but yeah, Adderall is speed, and uh, it works. <laughs> this is a slide. Uh, cholinergics. So there's a thing called choline, right? And your body uses choline. It takes choline and says, choline, you're really cool. Uh, I'm going to use you to make this neurotransmitter I have called acetylcholine. We talked about that before. Uh, so basically, uh, if you take in excess choline, then your body has more stuff to make more acetylcholine. It's like if you were building a house and you said, hey, here's more bricks, then they can make a bigger house, right? Uh, and you can get it from like basically everywhere. Uh, choline is in like all foods forever. Uh, but most of it, uh, most uh, readily available sources are eggs. Uh, if you ate eggs this morning out there, they were free and they will make you smarter. Uh, eggs are like the best food ever, in case anyone was curious. They have everything you will ever need. Uh, you can just eat eggs forever and live. Uh, not a doctor. Yeah, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor, like, like, I, like, take my medical advice, like, you should take Dr. Oz's medical advice. Uh, except mine's like maybe better. <laughs> I made these slides uh, on Thursday night. I was like, oh shit, Freaknik's this weekend. And so I stayed up all night and made this presentation. Uh, and I think I still did more work than Dr. Oz. Uh, I love him. I love him. I hope he sees this. Uh, if anyone knows him, send him a link. Okay, so eggs. Uh, awful. Everyone know what awful is? It's yeah, it's called awful, so it has to be good, right? Yeah, it's like the, the parts of animals that people aren't right. supposed to eat. It's like, yeah, like we threw this away, and then, but maybe we should just eat it anyway. So like brains and intestines and hearts and stuff like that. Uh, it turns out that those are awesome, like liver. Those have all sorts of good stuff in them, and they're really high sources of choline. Uh, and then there's this thing called alpha-GPC, which you can get in a pill form. Uh, alpha-GPC is derived from breast milk. Uh, and it is uh, very bioavailable, which basically means that like, it's sort of like eggs. Eggs are an incredibly bioavailable, meaning that every single nutrient that is in an egg, your body can use. Whereas a lot of foods, there's stuff in it that you, you can't do anything with. Your body takes it, it's like, I can't, not, I can't do anything with this, and it puts it through the system. Uh, Alpha GPC, basically you take it, it all goes in. Uh, and people think that uh, Alpha GPC being in breast milk is the reason that uh, children actually mentally develop when they're babies, is basically they get this drug from their mom, and 
and uh, if you're a mom, you give your kid drugs, you're doing good so far. Uh, but yeah, and then they get smart. So uh, if, if you don't rescue your children, then you're really just like screwing yourself over. Uh, so those are choline, or that, that is choline. It's good, and you should put some in your body. Uh, now there's this other thing that I highly recommend and love, uh, which is called Cooperzine A. Cooperzine A is derived from some kind of Chinese moss that I can't remember the name of right now. Uh, and it is, uh, it basically is an, another long word, bear with me, acetylcholinesterase uh, is a, is a uh, enzyme in your body. Who's in, did you just say enzyme? I like you. Do you want to do this talk? <laughs> no, it's fine. The eggs of AFE. I just there's some nouns. That's fine. You just I, read the slides out loud. Yeah, it's, you just, it's fine. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so acetylcholinesterase, right, is an enzyme in your body uh, that breaks down acetylcholine if you have too much. Uh, well, actually, not even if you have too much. It just does it naturally. It just goes around your body and it just finds it and, and destroys it so that you don't have too much, effectively. Uh, and Huperzine A basically says, don't do that. Um, so if you take a lot of choline and you increase your levels of acetylcholine, then you take this huperzine, it stops your body from breaking it back down, and then you just have a lot of neurotransmitters going on. This went away. I fixed it. I fixed it. Um, so yeah. So huperzine A does that. Uh, it is also an NMDA receptor agonist, which uh, is a long way of saying that it, it makes your body make more nerve cells. So effectively, uh, you, can, you can take this and it will make more brain in your brain. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, race Tams, person. So on that, you made a, you made a big point of uh, Chinese moss. Is yes. that because it's stupid rare and therefore is it expensive or no, availability you can, you, you or can what? Get, you, so it's just where it comes from. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm sure there's some other source okay. of it somewhere, but, uh, and no, it's not expensive. Uh, like you can buy, you can buy a bottle of Hube on Amazon, uh, like 200 pills for like eight bucks. I don't know why more people don't do it and it's probably because they haven't seen this talk yet. You guys should all, I'll see you guys all on an Amazon link that will give me a kickback. Uh, and you can do this. I should have actually done that in this. So this is a, actually one of the only talks that's guaranteed to make you smarter. Yes, yes. If you were here for any of the other talks, I'm sorry. You'll increase your, your understanding of all the other talks because you yes. saw this talk. Yes. Why wasn't it on Friday? Because right. <laughs> they don't like me. A bitch. They were like, we're going to put him on at 10 in the morning because it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some guy named think Chris Fist who talked yesterday. That just sucks. Okay, race tams. Race tams. There are a lot of race of tams. Uh, and they are one of those drugs that I said that nobody really knows how they work. Uh, they just kind of know they do. Nobody's bothered to really study them in depth, like from a like, I'm gonna publish a paper about it way. It's mostly just a lot of people take them and say this is good. Uh, so there are a lot of them um, and uh, they are good. They help you, uh, they help you focus and learn and remember things. Uh, and uh, they, all, they, they all work in slightly different ways, but they're all chemically similar, which is why they're all called race tams. Um, I don't know a lot about them. I've never done them, but I felt like I had to talk about them. They're great for a headache. They're great for a headache. Does anyone have some race tams? <laughs> <laughs> I have a headache. Uh, oh, no, they give you the headache. Uh, they give me yeah. a headache. Oh. That's why you take the choline with them. I took them last night. <laughs> Maybe. I don't remember. I took them last night. Uh, but yes, they're a thing. I don't know much about them. That is a slide. Come back to me in next year. Uh, nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals is a long word of saying herbal supplements that probably don't work very well. Um, things like ginseng, uh, ginkgo biloba, uh, and sage are like folk medicines that everyone knows about uh, and you can buy in pills at Walmart. Um, and there's not a whole lot of scientific evidence to support them. Uh, so they may or may not work, but they seem to kind of work on uh, doing things like giving you increased energy, uh, in, uh, increased memory retention, things like that. If you like to try things and you want to spend some money on something that may or may not work, you can find them easily and try it yourself. It might work for you. Uh, but I try. I prefer to stick to things that have longer scientific names um, because it makes me feel like I am doing something smarter than like, taking. I'm eating garlic for my brain. 
Um, so that is the thing. So, nootropics are awesome. There are downsides. Are you guys ready for downsides? No. It's fine. Here they come. Oh. Uh, so, the three downsides, there's probably more than this, but this slide is only this big. Uh, <laughs> Uh, unexpected secondary changes. Uh, that is a term I made up at one in the morning, so I hope you understand what I mean when I say it. So, okay, so your body makes neurotransmitters, right? And the levels of neurotransmitters that your body makes affects the levels of the other neurotransmitters it produces and the other chemicals your body produces. Homeostasis. Um, what? Homeostasis. Yes, yes, I'm doing this talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so effectively, if you're taking a drug that's going to really, really, really increase, uh, say, what did I use in here? Your dopamine. Uh, your body recognizes that, hey, I've got a lot of dopamine. You know what it's time for? A huge adrenal adrenaline rush. Uh, because that's what your body does. It makes dopamine uh, to signal that it's time for fight or flight mode. Uh, so you can basically, unknowingly and unwittingly, uh, really do cool stuff to your brain that you didn't expect to do, which sometimes is great and sometimes uh, it involves you getting really, really paranoid and feeling like you have to run out of the room. Uh, don't worry, I'm here. Uh, so, decrease natural production. This one sucks. So, I'm gonna use an example uh, that, that I know, because I know a guy who was a professional bodybuilder and he used to take stero or, uh, testosterone injections a lot, right? He took a lot of testosterone uh, injections and his body realized one day, I don't have to make testosterone anymore. Somebody just puts it in me. So then when he stopped taking testosterone, his body stopped producing testosterone and he, he went from being like, I'm a man to being like, am I a man? Uh, so this can do the same thing, right? Uh, so if you take something that gives you a lot of acetylcholine and then you stop, uh, your body can say, or if you take a lot, your body can basically say, I don't need to make it anymore. Uh, and then it will really fuck up your brain chemistry and cause problems that you will then have to take other drugs in order to fix, right? Um, and then tolerance. Anybody who does drugs knows about tolerance. Uh, eventually your body gets used to stuff and you have to take more of it to get an effect. Uh, and nootropics are expensive most of the time, so this is a bad thing. So, that said, I have a pro tip for everyone. Don't take them all the time. Um, I, I usually find that it's best to take uh, any kind of nootropic or, or nootropic stack you're doing for like two weeks, three weeks, and then stop, and then give it some time, or try a different one instead that it works in a different way, um, because it lets your body down cycle and get, get used to it, get all the great benefits from it, and then down cycle and recover, and then you can do it all over again. Um, and it's great. So like. I, I like to take Hooperzine if I know I have to do something that I really have to study for like a week or two if I'm trying to like uh, learn, a talk. learn a language or make a talk for Freaknik. I took a lot of drugs in my research for this talk uh, and that is on, that, like that means that's on levels. Like I took drugs as research and I took drugs for research. Um, I am dedicated. 3D5 uh, me. Yes, that. I don't know what you said. 2D for me. Oh, yes, I am. Okay, so you guys want to know what drugs you should take if you've never done nootropics before and you want something that's safe and really, really good. Um, I, I, this was the first, the first stack I ever tried, and I shit you not, it is like taking a lot of Adderall and being really hyper-focused on stuff. If you've ever taken a lot of Adderall and you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so it is four pills. You can buy all of these pills on Amazon.com. Uh, for cheap. Basically, I made this stack that I took twice a day, and I think I spent like 30 bucks altogether on it, something like that. Um, so caffeine. Get caffeine pills. Uh, you can also drink caffeine, but it's easier in the morning to just take a pill with all the rest of your pills. Uh, FYI, all of the ones that I hit, that I have up here, I recommend taking about 200 milligrams uh, of each of them once or twice a day. I don't recommend it, though, uh, but you should do it given the things that I told you. Uh, so, you take caffeine. One moment, sir. You take caffeine because it's caffeine and that's what we do. Uh, you take L-theanine, as we talked about, because it makes caffeine much, much better uh, and it takes all the crappy parts of caffeine away. Uh, so those two are there to provide you with your energy and your alertness, right? Uh, and then you take choline because it makes your brain uh, put out more brain juice 
and you take cuprazine because it makes the brain juice stay there uh, and it makes more brain in your brain. <coughs> yes, we have all we have all covered this. So you have something. You have two pills that will make you uh, attentive and focused, and you have two pills that will make you remember what you were focused on. It's really really good for learning things. Um, you had a question. Oh, uh, since you were saying take this, is there? Um any of these that are affected by body weight where people would need more or less? Um, as far as I know, no, but I am not a doctor and you can be a scientist and find out. Um, that is that is the, the good thing about nootropics is that it's basically like, like this is a very safe stat. Um, if you take 200 milligrams of each and it doesn't work for you and you say, okay, I'm gonna take 300 milligrams for a day or two and see how it feels, it's probably fine. Uh, if it feels not fine, stop. Um, I can't. I can't recommend that enough. If you are experimenting with any kind of drug or substance and it feels not good, don't do it anymore. Um, and maybe if it keeps feeling not good after you stop, go see like a person who's not me. You should probably say that caffeine is dangerous. Oh, caffeine is dangerous. Uh, I wouldn't recommend taking excessive amounts of caffeine. Thank you, person. Uh, because caffeine is like a thing that will actually do things like affect your heart rate and can make you not feel good. Two hundred milligrams is like four cups of coffee, right? Yeah, it's yeah, fine though. It's that's fine. Yeah, it's good. It's good. You. Uh, most people's brains are about the same size. Yes. Except mine. Except my availability. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, uh, effectively, the, your brain is the same size for pretty much everyone. Um, it may, you, your actual body size may have some effect on how potent these drugs are, just given the, um, the rate at which your body can absorb it and get it through your body back to your brain. Uh, eventually, it will all get absorbed and go to your brain. Uh, so effectively, if you... T I, I'm just talking on my ass right now, um, but if you're a bigger person, it might be like taking an, an extended release type of capsule instead of a regular one where it just takes a little while to get to you. I don't know. Try it, let me know. I will give you my email. Now it's time for those questions you guys have been asking. <laughs> this is how talks are supposed to work. You have a question. Actually, I was just going to say Uberzine A. Uh, yes. Be careful with that one as far as the dosage. The source that I have says take 10 micrograms. What? Uh, not milligrams. So it's a very little tiny, like if you have ever used stevia, yeah, less than that. I My so, pills are bigger. <laughs> yeah, mine are tiny. Interesting. Mine's powder. Mine's straight ah. powder, not pills. So. Heavy filler. How do you measure out 10 micrograms of powder? Uh, very carefully with a scale and a very tiny scoop. Uh, I call BS. Nope. Micrograms. Air pressure would affect your scale. No. The correct answer was you dilute it. You dilute the pure uh, we have it by a thousand, and then you measure a thousandth of that out, and then you know how much you have. Volumetric. No scale is that accurate. Do a volumetric. Do a volumetric. Yeah. I just want you to know, I think you're both right. <laughs> I think you're both right. Does anyone else have questions? You in the back. Do we order receipts on the internet? Yes. yes, you cannot get them through Amazon, I learned. Uh, Amazon, Amazon has decided that those are real drugs uh, and they will not let you, but you can go on the internet and just type in, I want this. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can go to nootropics.com uh, and just buy it in like big bags and powder form. And then you can make your own pills and feel like a real-time drug lord. Uh, Jonathan. Uh, can you... Go, could you go back to your slide for L-theanine? Which one? Uh, whatever the... The first one? Yeah. I missed the part on L-theanine. I have a really bad reaction to caffeine. Yes. I, I got diagnosed ADHD when I was a kid. But I'm sure like many of you here. And uh, caffeine helps me focus, but I get so panicked. Is that one of the negative effects? Yes. Of yes. So L-theanine, uh, it will... That's a microphone. It's fine. Um, yeah. It basically, like, L-theanine... I don't know how, I don't know why, I know it works. Um, but yeah, it, like I, I've taken excessive amounts of caffeine along with, with L-theanine and it definitely like gives me all of the good and then it's like all the parts where I would be like, I don't have that. I'm just like, I'm really focused, I have a lot of energy, I'm gonna do everything, I'm the best person in the world and then uh, 
the next day I'm like, I need to do this again. Uh, um, taurine. Oh yeah, taurine's yeah, cool too. Taurine, the ones that, that we were taking is a combo of L-theanine and taurine, um, which probably helped too. Uh, it basically, like we were taking in pill form everything that is in an energy drink, uh, so it's like being able to control the levels of everything in right. your energy drink um, without all of the crappy parts of the things that are in your energy drinks, uh, like Heart, sugar and par things. Taurine alone slows your heart rate. Like it's a super calming. Um, so it very much counteracts. That's why they put it in energy drinks, because it's that calmingness, a couple of other products, some of caffeine. That, that's why they do that. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Question, person. Uh, so if I were supplementing omega-3s, like that, I might be supplementing at levels that I could get from eating like a doable amount of fish. Like, sure. Is the, the, the choline supplementation, is that similar to like eating a doable amount of liver or whatever, or is it like way more? Um, it's roughly equivalent. Um, like, I honestly, I'm not, I don't have like a number to tell you like what the difference would be, uh, but you can get it from a dietary supplement just as easily if you eat like, I know, I know people that are big nootropic people and they're like, yeah, I get up in the morning and I eat like two eggs. You can. And, Get way more of it in the pill form. Yeah, it's probably more, get more easy to absorb it from a, uh, a, a natural product. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, so food or the uh, the alpha GPC I was telling you about the stuff that comes from breast milk that you can just like the food like eggs like I was saying eggs are fantastic. Uh, your body can take eggs and use all of it. Uh, you can even like you could just eat an egg shell and probably do something with it because they are a miracle <laughs> sent down from a chicken. Um, yeah. And uh, but yeah, like you um, in pill form. So choline's weird. Uh, choline is is a thing that there are some sources of choline that your body can't use. They're not bioavailable, and people will pay money for them, and they don't do anything. Um, so alpha GPC uh, is a source that you can use. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, or like like we're saying, just eat some eggs. Eat some eggs, or if you like liver and you like to eat brains, eat brains. Uh, it turns out that zombies were they had they had different motivation than we all thought. Uh, do we have other questions? You're here. So, you know, when I look at these things online, I'm always nervous that I'm not actually buying the thing that is said yes. that I'm, being, I'm buying. So, do you have ideas about how to um, ascertain the, the purity and actually then? If the compound that you're buying is actually the compound that you intended to buy, you can buy test kits there's for a, everything. Yeah, there's a couple of I can't remember what they're can called. Can you trust but, the test kits? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does. He has he has long hair and a headband. <laughs> he knows a thing or two about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the only thing about it, there's, I can't remember which ones uh, I should recommend, but there's two that you can get, and sometimes the whatever you're testing won't show up on your test kit. So there's like known chemicals, something like, okay, we'll change to this color if it's this, or if it's this, or if it's this. And if it changes to a color that's not in that, like it ranges from like a yellow to black, and if it changes for a color that's outside of that, then it's not anything. So that is a good way. Another another thing that I have found is very useful uh, is th so the internet exists, um, and I don't I don't say this in like a sarcastic Google it way, um, but like there are like in, like forums on the internet that this is all people talk about. They're just like, hey, let's do nothing with our lives except talk about how we're going to make our lives better with drugs, um, <laughs> and they know a thing or two. Uh, it's kind of like Guinea Forum, though, where they also they know a thing or two, and then they say a lot more things. Uh, so you kind of have to sit down and like read through stuff and parse through what is legit and like what is not. Um, so, but you can learn a lot, and you can uh, that is a good place to find out uh, from people if they have what a good source to buy places from, to buy to buy places from to buy these drugs from and. Uh, what people think about them, like, because that's what people a lot of times do. They just buy this from a place and then write reviews on it, uh, and so you can get pretty good info out of that. Uh, you just kind of have to take some time to look at it and you know figure out 
uh, like who the people on a message board. Like it's like a message board, right? You have to figure out who's the person that's actually smart and who is not. So uh, once you've ascertained that you actually have the chemical yes. that you say and you do out of your test kit, how do you know how much of it is per volume of powder or pill? Well, if it's a to... if it's a powder, um, most of the times that I have come across powders, it it should be just the drug. Um, should be. Uh, if it's a pill, uh, the the uh, it'll. I mean, it will say on there how much is in it, and that's usually pretty close. Uh, and that's the actual. That would be the actual measurement of the drug itself within the pill. So right. Uh, if you so really not, want to, you can do stoichiometry. If like, you really super duper want to know, you can do stoichiometry and react out. Like you can get like something that reacts with it, and then you can measure out whatever your result is. Uh, so that's that's a little more complicated. You mentioned by volume and volume. Powders can settle over time right. to the bottom of the container, can be different than a top. Certainly. And so you should always do things by weight until mm -hmm. you know, you've know you got a routine where you have a scoop or something mm -hmm. that is the same weight. Yeah. You know, it's always by weight, never by volume. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were saying something. Um, what was I saying? Something about regulation. Regulation. Aren't the, like, these things aren't, or aren't they regulated by FDA? Not for the, like, like this says it's going to make your life better, but for the, like, if I put something on the label, I have to make sure that it's actually that stuff. So, for stuff that you don't get from India. So the answer to that question is no, and it should be. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing about buying pills on the internet, right? Uh, I'm going to tell you guys a secret about supplements, is that most supplements are completely unregulated, uh, and that's why when you read the labels of things, it says, may do this. Uh, because the government says, hey, you can't tell people that it will do this uh, because there's no evidence for it and it, you would be lying to them in that case. Um, so like things like herbal supplements, completely unregulated, uh, and they are unregulated in the very bad way to where you can put fucking anything in a pill and say that it's ginseng and sell it to someone and it's okay. Um, and people do that. There, there have been many places that are busted where they found out that people were just like taking plants from outside and crushing them up and putting them in a pill and saying it was some medicine for people. Um, you might have a neighborhood to get stopped for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, so there is there's essentially, there is regulation and not regulation. Um, most of it is like regulation through just telling people you can't do this. Uh, like with with most nootropics, it is uh, it has basically been said like most places they're just they won't sell, you know, because they don't want to sell something under a, a pretense that's not approved by the government. Like Racetams said, you can't buy on Amazon because Amazon decided that like this was being marketed too much as a it will do this and not an it may do this, and so they just said scrap them, take them off the market. Um, but yeah, so there's not really a licensing board. There's not really any kind of federal controls. The prescription ones are, obviously, because they're a prescription drug from a big pharmaceutical company. Um, and so people will like look at that stuff and approve it. Uh, but things like Cooperzine, uh, things like, you know, any of the other any of the other drugs we talked about, you kind of just have to look around and find a source that you trust and then try it. Um, and hope for the best. And if not, I'm sorry. Uh, do we have any more questions? You're here. It's actually, um, if it's either false or misleading, the FDA will come in. They're big on, yes. you know, take down the guys who are producing it. But yes. other than that, there is no, you know, oversight. Yes. You so know, if it's killing people, that is that is a, that is a that is a <laughs> valid point. I do, I should I should <laughs> clarify on that. Um, it is not unregulated in the way that like the government's just like fuck it. Yeah. Uh, it but. It is unregulated in the way that they don't look closely at it. If they do find out that you are a shady person making uh, making leaves out of the grass in the back, making leaves, making pills out of the grass in your backyard, if they find out, they will stop you. Uh, but if they don't, they, they're not going to look real hard to find out uh, unless they stumble upon it, and then they will take credit uh, and stop it. I, I like just totally talked over you while you were still talking. Do you have anything else you want to say? <laughs> no, no, I was just um, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't here for the whole talk, so I don't really. I, I will tell you later. It wasn't that good. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I expected this to take more than thirty minutes, and then to ask questions. 
if, if you, you if the false and misleading claims thing is if you make the false and misleading claims, if you say these are leaves from my magic backyard and make no claims, then yes. you're okay. Uh, Likewise, if you say it's this is a uh, choline and make no claims that it does anything, but it better be choline mm -hmm. if that's what you're selling. Yes. Yeah, and they're um, a third party um, uh, oversight regulatory, you know companies that do just that, so you probably want to look for those particular manufacturers that have that on the label, yes. you know, that are, that have the purity they're actually saying, and that third parties testing it. Yeah, that, that. they are testing. Because yeah. how much is your brain worth? And I think it's better to buy more expensive ingredients yes. from a trusted company than save, you know, 50% getting it from somewhere else. Yes. Because the quantities involved, you know, you do, you Pills are small. <laughs> so something, something that I didn't think about until now, uh, to answer this guy's question from before about finding good sources. Uh, you remember how I said all this stuff is on Amazon, right? Most of this stuff is on Amazon. If you go in and set it to search for the highest rated stuff, that is usually good. Um, I have found I have found that to be a good thing of all of my best sources that I've found for these things because I've tried a different a few different brands of all these different things, uh, and all of the best sources all have the best ratings because the people that take them get smarter and they know. Um, <laughs> the five hundred people say yeah. Yeah, they're like this is great. Don't don't take the other stuff. Uh, and I trust the internet uh, blindly. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, I I saw a question in the back somewhere. Uh, it was you. Uh, so, so going, you, you mentioned that you had gotten a headache uh, after having taken modafinil. That's that's actually a side effect sometimes of taking modafinil. Uh, it, it can be mitigated by uh, drinking lots of water. Yes. But I to clarify. I have a headache because I drank copious amounts of alcohol last night, uh, and then I took the modafinil because I had it, and I was like, YOLO, and I took it, uh, and it turns out I was right. You you do only live once. <laughs> so, so make the best, so make the watch. best of it. This is this is going to come into a, this is turning into a graduation speech now. Uh, I look around this room. I see many many faces. Some some are bearded. I look at you all, and I know you will do great things in the world. Does anyone else have questions? <laughs> no one else has questions. I have more time, so we're going to keep the speech going. <laughs> you have a question. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I knew if I threatened to filibuster. <laughs> so, 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 um, I, you know, it sounds like a lot of people maybe are not keeping excellent notes about exactly what's going yes. on in their bodies. Um, are there? Uh, groups of people that are attempting to sort of more scientifically um, evaluate these, uh, but, but on, a, on an amateur level, like yes. I'm taking X number of things per day, I'm going to try this for six months, let me sit, send my same packet to some other guy and see how he reacts. So I don't know if it's quite that structured, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, yeah, so there, there are these people that are, they're awesome people, I'm one of them, uh, we are called biohackers, right? And we are all about uh, figuring out stuff that is biological. And some of that is like doing biology stuff, and some of it is like, how can I make myself the better person that I always wanted to be, and that my parents would never let me be? Uh, <laughs> I'm a grown up now, I can take drugs. Uh, uh, so yes, like there, there, are, um, there are online biohacking organizations. There are some places you can go to, they're not very common because this is a kind of obscure thing that you don't find a lot of people who like to do in the same places. Um, but yeah, there are places where people actually get together and do things and swap notes. And, but the internet, again, is the, is the place to go because that is, that is the future and everyone knows it and they're going there to do everything with the people that like them and not the people that don't like them where they live. That is how the internet works, in case anyone was curious. I explain it you are very Bill well. Bill. I am, it's fine. Uh, my, my hangover is going away slightly. <laughs> this has helped. Thank you guys all for helping my hangover. Do we, are, are we done here? Can we go? Oh, you're done. I'm done. You're done. Thank you. You're done.